Now, the interesting coda to that story is, of course, many, 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 many years later, some of the bootleg copies showed up on eBay, and somehow they got back to the people, I think it was a Quatsi at the time, who were running D&D then. And they all looked at it and said, oh, geez, this isn't so bad. Why did you destroy the entire, why did they do this? And they actually put out a facsimile simile edition of B3. So if you want to see it, I believe it's still out there. You can probably find it in PDF form on the internet and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's the B3 story. And I'm, I'm looking at my watch and I'm like, wow, you know, I've actually been chattering for a long time here. Eventually, because of political uh, office politics, which I've never been good at, I ended up moving from editorial to the art department uh, and had, you know, had a great time at the art department. I did uh, a lot of maps. Uh, I was the mapping and graphics guy and I did a lot of them and I did them very well. And there was like two years where I put, I literally worked on everything that TSR sent out the door as, uh, as a graphic artist. And that was a lot of fun. That came out about because uh, Steve Winter, who's a great friend and, and a great designer, was hired on at TSR. And Steve was a was and is a gamer, and a, he was trained as an editor. So there was a point where uh, the, an edict came down that Steve Winter was such it, it was it wasn't specifically said to be him, but we all knew it was him. This guy was so good, and he came out of here with a journalism degree that everyone that worked in the editorial department would from thence on have to have a related degree in college. Now, if you've been here since the beginning of my talk, you remember that I quit college <laughs> to go work for these guys. And they were not, supposedly, not going to grandfather in anybody in the department that, had, that did not have a degree, which included me and John Pickens and Ed Solis. And at that point, I thought I was looking at either being fired or switching to the art department, um, which I've always had kind of a, a, a tug of war in my, in my life between art and writing. And at that point, having done writing and editorial for a while, art was ascendant and it, you know, it continues today. You can see these books, uh, a lot of which I've written, but I've also done the covers on most of them. Um, so I switched over and worked in the art department there with uh, Jim Rosloff and, and uh, Tim Truman and Keith Parkinson and Larry Elmore was my office mate, my cellmate at the old Hotel Claire for a while, and Jeff Easley and Clyde Caldwell, and, uh, Jeff Butler, and probably someone I'm forgetting who's really important. Uh, we had a great time, did a lot of great work, and I worked there um, until 1984, and then I left TSR to help start a company called Pace Setter which designed the original chill role-playing game, not the, sl the slasher version that they re-released re fairly recently, but the original Gothic horror game, Time Master. We did a uh, board game called Web and Wampage, which had uh, bunnies with chainsaws that was very popular, and we won a bunch of awards, and uh, I did that for a while. Uh, eventually, that failed because it was undercapitalized, and I became a freelancer in 1986. And I've been a freelancer more or less ever since. I did a lot of uh, maps for the Dragonlance world. Um, I did the, uh, I don't know if you're Dragon Magazine readers, but if you've been around long enough, I did a comic strip called The, Dra uh, the Twilight Empire that ran in Dragon for four years uh, with my friend John Hebert and uh, various other accomplices. And uh, not so long ago, but probably more than well, more than 10 years ago, uh, I started writing novels. And I started by uh, writing a Twilight Empire novel that to this day has not been published and probably shouldn't be until I completely revise it. But uh, one of the things you learn writing novels is how to write novels. And if you complete one, people figure you can do more. That got me some ghost writing jobs, writing a, a very famous uh, series of boy detective novels, which I wrote 14 of those over the years. Uh, including the last in the original series. The contract says I can't tell you what boy detective novels they are, but if I said it, everyone would know. Um, I did those for a while, and having worked on those led to me uh, having novel credits, which led to me being 
uh, able to pitch for the Legend of the Five Rings series of novels, and I was uh, lucky enough to be chosen to write the first book in that series. I wrote The Scorpion and The, the Phoenix and the Lion, and I won uh, my first Origins Award for that, and I've been doing a lot of writing since. I wrote uh, a number of movie adaptation novels, and uh, sadly not enough of my own stuff until recently, because one of the things they don't teach you as you're, write, as you're writing all these cool things, as I'm working on comics and doing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I'm doing L5R, and I'm writing Mage Knight, and all this kind of stuff, is you don't own any of that. And so when they put it out of print, you don't get the royalties anymore, which is too bad, but everything goes <coughs> upward and onward. And all of that started, and I remain a writer and an artist on a freelance basis now. I'm doing a lot of ebooks currently, and I have a a jar up there if you want to sign up for my mailing list. You can also sign up online. Uh, but if you want to sign up, I'll put you into the mailing list and we'll get you something something free and cool. So that's um, that's kind of most of my history of TSR in a nutshell. I mean, I'm astonished how long it took to tell. Oh, one, one other thing that's worth relating is that uh, because of the, the fact that Gary wasn't in our building, uh, at the time that I was working at TSR, I really didn't know Gary well. I saw him a couple of times now and again, uh, you know, in non-confrontational, everyone's going to fire you moments, which uh, again, I don't really think were, were kind of his fault. He was, it was just uh, office politics, and office politics is something I've, I've never really been good at. Um, but the odd thing was the, the year that we quit to form Pace Center, we were at, at Gen Con with our first stuff, and TSR, the executives were not too happy about us because Mark Akers and, and uh, a lot, and I, and a whole bunch of really talented people had gone off and formed this other company, and they were really kind of anxious to see us fail because their thought was, you were at TSR and you weren't really employable. This was kind of the one place in the world where a misfit like you could work, which was one of the reasons eventually that a lot of us left. And so they were kind of anxious to see us fail, but we were having a really good Gen Con. And I remember we were all in the, um, there was kind of an underground area at Parkside where they served pizza. It was like the pizza pit or something like that. I don't remember what it was. It was kind of a dark, gloomy place, but it, it was a, a good place. The pizza was all right, but it was a good place to hang out between games. And we were sitting together, the pace center people, uh, Troy Denning and Mark Akers and, and uh, me and uh, Michael Williams and probably a few other folks, down in this underground area. When who should come down, I mean, literally illumined in the doorway, because it's all dark here, but the doorway leading upstairs was like, and we look up, and in the doorway is Gary. Gary spots us and makes a beeline right to, the t to our table, shakes all our hands and has this great conversation with us, about how terrific it was that we had struck out on our own and how he wished us all the success. And that turned out to be um, kind of a turning point in my relationship with Gary in terms of that was when he and I started to become friends. And it was really, considering the company was very hostile to us, it was really heartwarming that the guy that had started it all didn't harbor any of that animosity. That was all kind of corporate office politics game playing. And it was all okay with him, and Gary and I later went on to design some stuff together that for various reasons never came up, but we remained friends for the rest of his life, and it was a, it was a real privilege. He was a really nice guy, and uh, I remain friends with his entire family to this day, I'm happy to say. And which brings us back to kind of where I started, at GaryCon, where there is, GaryCon is next month in near Lake Geneva, it's not in Lake Geneva proper, but it's close enough that you can get, get to it from there. And if you all want to come out and play some really cool games and meet some of the old timers and hang out and maybe play a game or two with us, you get a chance to do